Caution to worker killed after being hit by trailer was urges road users to exercise caution. A call center worker was killed on Friday after she was reportedly hit by a trailer traveling on Walker's Road in St. Catherine. The deceased has been identified as 22-year-old Brittany Hunter. Reports are that shortly after 8.30 a.m., Hunter was attempting to cross the road when she walked into an oncoming trailer. She was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where she was pronounced dead on arrival. It is understood that Hunter was on her way to work at the time of the incident. The 22-year-old leave behind one child. Following the news, Transport Minister Darrell Voss expressed sadness at her passing. Our heartfelt condolences goes out to the family and loved ones of the victim during this difficult time. The loss of a life under such circumstances is truly heartbreaking and our thoughts are with all those affected by the tragedy, Voss stated in a news release. Road safety is a matter of utmost importance to the government of Jamaica and we are committed to working tirelessly to prevent such accidents from occurring in the future. In fact, the Ministry is about to roll out a pedestrian safety campaign specifically aimed at educating and protecting this category of road users. We we'll continue to urge all road users to exercise caution, obey traffic law, and always prioritize the safety of themselves and others, he continued. The Minister extended his deepest sympathies to the Berry family and reaffirmed the Ministry's unwavering commitment to providing road safety and preventing further tragedies at this nature. Heightened Police Operations in Manchester Against the backdrop of road fatalities and indiscipline on the nation roads, police in Manchester clamped down on defective vehicles and breaches of the Road Traffic Act on Friday. The clampdown targeted all major roads leading into the parish. Head of the Manchester Police, Deputy Superintendent Kerry Duncan, said at the end of the operation, 305 tickets were issued for breaches of the Road Traffic Act, 48 summons issued, and 32 sets of license plates removed from defective vehicles. He said the police also seized two cars and three motorcycles. Five pounds of marijuana was also seized. Head of the Police Era 3 Assistant Commissioner of Police Calvin Allen said the clampdown was a part of the coordinated operation. What you are seeing out here is a multifaceted security operation. It involved members of the Transport Authority, the Island Traffic Authority, our military partners. We are taking the approach of road policing all geared towards ensuring that we have safer roads. Geared towards ensuring that our citizens are reassured and feel safe as they traverse the respective corridors of Manchester, he noted. He pointed the stern warning of Police Commissioner Dr. Kevin Blake. You hear the utterances of our Commissioner of Police in recent times as he seeks to provide the level of reassurance to our citizens as to the role and function of the police, but also sending a clear message to those who seek to disrupt the good order of society, he stated. What we are doing out here is basically practicalizing the utterances of our Commissioner as we seek to ensure greater order and safety on our nation roads and in our communities, he added. Operations on the way into Valley Gardens after men fired at police. Several operations were carried out in Tivoli Gardens in Kingston Western Police Division in search of men who fired on a police team on Thursday morning. One of the operations resulted in the seizure of a firearm. Senior Superintendent Miguel Phillips, head of the police division, says about 3.30 p.m., the police responded to reports of extortions in Denham Town. The body of a man identified as Randolph Keith Douglas of a Tivoli Gardens address was found on Albert Street in the vicinity of the Denham Town Police Station. SSP Phillips said officers were processing the scene when they came under attack. The information we have gotten so far is suggesting that he was actually in the area and a call was made to persons and he was actually set up, shot and killed. There was some information which was spreading within the Tivoli Gardens area that he was killed by the police and we are theorizing that as a result of that misinformation, the guys came and they fired shots towards the police station damaging two service vehicles, he reported. SSP Phillips said the attack was repelled and a firearm and ammunition were seized. He said operations are ongoing in the Tivoli Gardens area to locate the men responsible for the attack. The security presence is heightening in and around the General Denham Town and the Tivoli Gardens area. 
we are advising that persons can traverse the area freely, but they should at some point be prepared for some delays due to the operation that is ongoing. But we are trying to make the area as safe as possible for them to traverse. In the meantime, SSP Phillips said, it is suspected that the shooting in Denham Town was arranged by someone in custody. This particular matter seems to have eliminated from a situation where some call was made from our police lockups that persons were to come and try to insert contraband inside our lockups. Persons who were on the inside of the lockups may have sent a message to a rival gang member that these persons were expected to be coming in the area, and as a result of that, we are theorizing that they were set up and this person shot and killed, he further stated. Men caught stealing 150,000 keywords of goods from vendor stall. Two men who were caught on video stealing items from a vendor stall pleaded guilty to simple larceny on Tuesday when they appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. Ramon Reynolds and Namaba Grant were caught on video breaking into a vendor stall on May 10, 2024. It is reported that they removed several items including beverages such as Heineken, Dragon and other perishable and non-perishable items valuing $150,000. Before asking for their pleas, presiding judge Carla Mesa commented, Gentlemen, it is alleged that you were observed being rather festive. Both Reynolds and Grant then entered guilty pleas. When asked if he could proceed with sentencing the men, Judge Mason responded, But of course, I mean, the rum buckle was empty. The sentencing was however postponed so that the complainant could do a thorough value breakdown of the perishable items stolen. She had initially estimated the value to be $10,000, saying, They drank everything, Your Honor. They only leave the condoms. They are to return to court on June 25, 2024. Their bail was extended, but the judge told them to get their house in order before sentencing. Knockings charged it wounding with intent after intervening in argument. A man who intervened in an argument between two people before allegedly attacking one of them with a knife has been charged with wounding with intent. Charge is 31-year-old Roman Robbins, otherwise called Knockins, of White River District in Buff Bay, Portland. Reports are that on Saturday, April 20, about 5.30 a.m., an argument developed between two men in the community during which Robbins intervened. According to the police report, Robbins allegedly used a knife to inflict several stab wounds to one of the two men. The injured man was assisted to hospital where he was treated and admitted. Robbins was taken into custody and charged following an operation. His court date is being finalized. Nearly 15,000 seniors registered on social pension program stated Charles Jr. A total of 14,932 people are currently registered on this social pension program which recorded more than $480 million in benefits paid out during fiscal year 2023-2024. Minister of Labor and Social Security Pernas Charles Jr. made the disclosure during his contribution to the 2024-2025 sectoral debate in the House of Representatives on Wednesday. He advised that the budget for this financial year has increased by 165% to $1 billion. Beginning this month, beneficiaries will receive an increase of over 76% in their by month benefits, moving from $6,800 to $12,000, Junior stated. He pointed out that the program requires applicants to have a birth certificate or passport to verify their age. We know that this requirement is difficult for some of our seniors. We have therefore strengthened our partnership with the RGD to enable our seniors to obtain their birth certificates. I can announce that we have made changes to allow for increased flexibility while maintaining the program's integrity, Charles Jr. added. Where an applicant has no birth certificate or passport, he or she can use a voter's ID or a photograph, along with an attestation of another elderly person of similar age, both signed by a justice of the peace, to register for the program, he added. People can also use their marriage certificate, birth certificate of children, and school record, among other documents, to assist in verifying their age. The social pension program was conceptualized by the government to target assistance to seniors over the age of 75 who are without a pension or any financial support and are not on the program of advancement through health and education path. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.